Josh, you're a, you're a mensch. We, uh, we're both uh, Claremont Institute uh, fellows, which is uh, a preeminent think tank in the United States focused on Western civilizational values and the founding. And I think there's a lot of corollaries with Claremont, which also teaches, in addition to pontificates, with what you guys are doing here in this very, very important initiative. Uh, so I have a little bit of a different background than, than most here who have presented, uh, because in addition to doing some uh, public policy, uh, activism and uh, culture war activism. Uh, I'm also a practical economist, not really an academic one. I spent a lot of years on Wall Street and I'm still currently an investment banker uh, actively doing capital raising and working in corporate finance strategy with a lot of companies. Uh, so, you know, that background gives me a little different perspective on the Central and Eastern European uh, project with three C's, the intramarium, and where culture and economics meet. Uh, for a moment, we should look at what economics is. In the academic sense, it is usually defined as a science of allocation of resources. But in a practical sense, and this is the way I, I look at it, it's a study of human activity in real time and a measure of productivity and output. Uh, the economics of the three C's and Central Europe is very interesting. On Wall Street, we refer to this region as an emerging market. And an emerging market is defined by generally higher growth, but also more volatility in that growth. The, the level of secure, uh, probabilistic judgment you make as an investor when looking at an emerging market is very, very different than a developed and more stable market because of that volatility. You have to apply probability that your expectation of what growth rates will be will actually be actualized. And you handicap and price and value uh, assets, cash flows, sovereign debt uh, with that in mind. Uh, the interesting thing, and I am a, a dual citizen, I, I live in Poland as well as the US, uh, and I invest here. Uh, and the interesting thing to me about this region is that the valuations are competitive because of this dynamic, but they're also highly attractive. And what the three C's does in Central Europe is it starts to create a more secure, stable economic base for some reasons I will get into. And that actually makes it much more attractive than most emerging markets. There's a little higher margin of safety to, uh, to paraphrase uh, a great hedge fund manager, Seth Klarman, uh, who judges the valuation of assets based on that metric of safety. Uh, and in the three C's, I think we're going to see play out because of what has developed over the last three or four years in political integration, and a political integration that's based somewhat on cult shared cultural values, which is important. Uh, but what I think we're gonna see play out uh, with what, what has been created, uh, with what uh, Poland has anchor-led uh, with, uh, with President Duda, having Trump here when he addressed Warsaw, and they, uh, Trump actually engaged the idea of the three C's, uh, what, I, what I perceive is going to happen is that the world and the, uh, the economic world is going to recognize that there's a big convergence going on in valuation. And you're going to be able to buy assets at a huge discount despite the high level of quality, especially vis-a-vis -vis, or juxtaposed with other emerging markets. The quality of assets here is very high. And when you look at securities, securities are just uh, the paperization, the, the representation of things like a cash flow or a fixed asset. And the quality of of these assets is higher here because of the people, because of the culture, because of the education. I, I like to use Poland, which is really the anchor of three C's with six largest uh, economy and nation by, by most metrics in the EU, 40 million people. Also has the highest literacy rate in the EU. It also has the highest level of college education in the EU. So when you see how the cultural impact of, of, of the society impacts the economy, it creates a, another reason why international investors can feel safe investing in a place like this. The fact that Poland can marry uh, with another 11 nations and aggregate to 112 million people, uh, my, uh, my good friend, uh, the, the Minister of Finance, Thaddeus Kraszynski, used 2018 numbers for, for aggregate GDP, which is 1.7 trillion. Well, each year there's been growth in this, and it's now over 2 trillion. Uh, on a per capita basis, though, it is lagging greatly with the Western uh, European Union and 
European uh, Monetary Union uh, countries. The per capita GDP in, in the three Cs is $17,000. I'm using US dollars, I'm gonna use 2019 numbers, is 17,000 versus the EU average, which is 35,000. So it's about half. That creates for, for especially mid and long-term investors an incredible opportunity for catch-up if they feel that security uh, is going to be more and more stable. And for an economist and investor, security means many things. Uh, it means, for instance, border security, which obviously has been uh, at risk in multiple arenas, coming from the third world with migration crisis, coming from uh, you know, our foreboding neighbor to the east, uh, which has also become a security threat, and that reduces conviction in that security, that safety. Uh, obviously, our friend in Ukraine uh, can speak about that and what that has done. If, if we recall the Hryvna, uh, when Russians invaded, plummeted against every, every major and developed currency. I mean, I remember uh, being in Ukraine around the time, and I think it was 35 to 1 against the dollar, which was down 70% uh, uh, down roughly. Uh, but with security, there's, especially in this part of Europe, there's another very, very important consideration, and that's energy. And what I think will be telegraphed to the world with the three C's is that a shared energy policy and a working together uh, to uh, achieve uh, raw energy source diversity uh, will also help stabilize these economies and give investors a lot of, of uh, positive expectation for economic growth, uh, the stability that allows them to also feel confident that valuations are going to rise, that currencies will strengthen. Uh, there are uh, economies, obviously Poland with the Zloty uh, has a flexible currency uh, that is allowed to float against those that sometimes see perverted uh, externalities applied to them, like the euro, which had, with the troika, we saw what happened in 2012-13 with uh, trying to uh, keep Greece in, uh, they printed a lot of money. They engaged in the same sort of quantitative easing that the U.S. did. Uh, they called it LTRO, long-term uh, refinancing option. It was printing money to try and create a pseudo uh, safety, feeling of safety uh, and stability. Instead, it's just going to lead to inflation. We're already starting to see that in all the developed economies. That's actually going to be another example where in this part of the world, especially with coordinated policy in the three Cs, that is also going to be more stable. That's going to telegraph uh, a, uh, a good investment opportunity and a higher probability of convergence for international investors, which is a virtuous cycle that will lead to higher foreign direct investment, that will lead to higher PPE, uh, property plant equipment uh, projects and capital expenditure, that will lead to more job growth. And so all of these things are virtuous cycles that the three C's, by getting these nations together, allows to happen, it allows these dynamics to take hold and hopefully accelerate. There are risks to this, though. And the risks to economies that are competing at higher and higher levels is usually in the public policy realm. It's in government. It's in uh, the intervention into the marketplace. It's uh, among the political class when they believe that jobs are created by the public sector as opposed to the private sector. And in the short term, public sector job growth can create GDP. In the long term, it's usually a drag, and the investment, the return on invested capital you get from public sector job creation versus private sector job creation is highly lagging, and in the intermediate, there's usually the old pay the piper, and there will be either recession, budget deficits. You want private sector job growth. Me, as a private equity investor and investment banker who's done business in Poland, who's closed private equity deals, who owns uh, uh, tradable, investable assets here, uh, both fixed and floating, uh, my own experience is one where Poland is competitive as it is, the high GDP growth, the incredible workforce and cultural dynamics. Uh, there's still a Byzantine structure to do business. Uh, the regulations are very high, the paperwork burden is very high, and the reporting burden is very high. In fact, Grant Thornton did a study a few years ago that Poland, of the larger EU economies, is the most overburdened with paperwork reporting. Uh, and that's a drag. I, when I do deals in the US these days, we can now now get a, from soup to nuts, a large capital uh, deal done just using DocuSign, and that is absolutely permittable in a, in a rule of law court setting. Here you need a lot of notaries, which are a guild that you pay to meet you large sums to sign off on contracts that two counterparties are signing of their own volition. Those kind of dynamics do persist. It does seem like that's going to take some time to work its way out. Hopefully the three C's 
knowing that you have an incredible economic opportunity, uh, you know, I quoted the per capita GDP, out of the uh, 12 nations, 11 out of the 12 are under the average, the midpoint being of, of the EU, the midpoint being $17,000, that's dragged up by Austria, which is the only one of the 12 nations that's in the top quartile of EU nations in GDP. Uh, with a $35,000 uh, average GDP per capita in the EU, Austria's at 50000 even higher than Germany, which is, because of the weighting of 80 million people, is a, also a higher drag up on the average EU. But that opportunity that exists to see convergence and to see per capita GDP rise with so much upside, there, there's an old joke on Wall Street that you don't invest in high margin companies, you invest in low margin companies, profit margins, because high margin companies are at risk of losing those margins and seeing earnings degraded. Low margin companies, there are opportunities for that margin to expand and profitability to rise. And that's what I perceive to be here as well. And I think most of the developed world investors are going to start seeing that as well. Hopefully, it's more Western investors and less China. That's been a risk. China has been deploying capital here and engaging in a sort of economic imperialism in their long-term hegemonic ambitions. Uh, but I do think we're going to see a lot more Western investment here. And I do hope that some of these Byzantine bureaucratic structures from most of these nations, 11 out of 12, coming out of the Iron Curtain with the post-communist structures, that they will start to move up the evolutionary cycle. Uh, one more point I will make in line with that is that state-owned enterprises do have a tendency, as again, a post-communist vestigial, to crowd out a lot of upstarts and the competitive free enterprise sector. And I'd love to see in many of these nations, if not full privatizations, more flotation of share of these companies. When you look at the WIG, which is the largest index in Central and Eastern Europe, it's the sort of the, uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Index for Poland, the majority of companies in that index are state owned, and those are political appointments, and they're not the most competitive entities. They can be good companies who do good work, and I understand the need for having created that system coming out of communism. Nobody wanted a Russian oligarchical free-for-all spoil system, but it's time, 25, 30, 35 years in, to start seeing more privatizations and more competition. With that said, I think the future is very bright for this economic region. I think it's going to be a dominant player for emerging market portfolio managers in the West, where the deepest pools of capital are, like New York, like London, and I think that that the future is very, very bright. I think the next two to three generations will be uh, economically led uh, in part by the growth in these 12 nations of the Three Seas Initiative and the, the role this university will have in helping the economics, helping the education system cannot be, uh, cannot be overstated. So thank you for having me and hopefully I didn't offend too many people. A few people's okay. <laughs>